34 to nothing, the final score. Georgia beats Mizzou. Bill Pollock along with Mike Reeves here as uh, we, I, I mean, I'm speechless. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a game this bad in a long time from the Missouri Tigers. You could say the Alabama loss from a couple of years ago, but that was kind of expected. This was not. I think that's the key. You didn't expect it to go this way. I'm not stunned that Georgia came in and won a football game. Georgia wins football game. Not 34 to nothing and not on a day where the offense showed zero hope of ever getting anything done. It was a quarter into this bill and I was really starting to think, I don't know how they're going to score today. And they didn't. And it, it's a very disappointing day. There's, there's no question. And, and, and let's be honest, that's really the third straight subpar game they played in a row. Indiana was a, was a bad game. And they played three and a half really bad quarters, I thought, at South Carolina. The defense was good enough, and then they rallied late. And then today, the sample size is starting to get large enough to be concerned. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, interesting stat, Todd Palmer from the Kansas City Stars, we were waiting for Gary Pinkle to come out, said that of Missouri's five, the first five plays that were in Georgia territory, three of them resulted in a turnover. They just shot themselves in the foot. And this wasn't all on Matty Mock either. I mean, he made a couple of bad throws. But there were two interceptions that were in the hands of receivers, popped out. Uh, There was the little bubble screen to Marcus Murphy that popped out of his hands, jumped across the line of scrimmage. Georgia gets it. Uh, They're moving the ball uh, midway early in the third quarter. Jimmy Hunt, after coming up with a nice play, has it bounce off of his hands. And, I mean, nothing went right. I mean, you just cannot pin all of this on Matty Mock. The receivers aren't getting open. He's not getting a lot of time. There's a, there's a lot of breakdowns on this offense. There are, and the nature of the quarterback position is you generally get the accolades when it's going well, and you get all the hoopla and the hoorahs, and when it's going poorly, everything falls on you too. And I will say this about Matty Mock. He seems to be the type who can handle that, if indeed that's what's going to happen. He doesn't seem like the type that will cower from it. No 34 to nothing loss falls on one football player. There's just no way you can go that direction. Fans will some, and it happens. Uh, Matty's not playing well. I'm not going to sit here and excuse it and say, well, he's playing well. And No, he's not. He's, he's making some bad choices at the times, but there's a whole lot of factors going into that. Bill, this was a, an overall team football breakdown of a day. They just had a lot of things go wrong in every facet of football. And when you do that, you look at the scoreboard at the end of the day against a pretty good team, and it's 34 nothing, and you don't have the 34. Matty Mock certainly shoulders the blame. He's ready to take on that responsibility. Here's what he had to say moments ago. Defensively, I mean, they, they beat us. And... I thought we had a, a great week of practice and, and came out and, and executed all week. It's just we came into the game and I don't know what it was. We just it's just something we got to fix. What was Georgia's defense doing that they were able to play so well? Uh, it wasn't. I mean, they did exactly what we expect. It's just it's, we got to execute. That's what it comes down to. And and uh, whether it's routes we got to run right routes or it's I got to put the ball in the right spot. It, it, that's what it comes down to. It's yeah, they beat us, but but we're beating ourselves once again. And, and it's just stuff we got to fix. Have you ever had a game that bad your entire career? Uh, nope. And and I don't plan on doing it again either. Matt, is it frustrating you're not going down vertically as much as you want to, or are you happy with? That? calls that are being called? Um, I mean, wh- whatever they call, I'm going to give everything I have to, to do and, and get our offense moving. And, and uh, I mean, it's that's what it comes down to. How do you, you seem like the ultimate confidence guy? Does a game like this shake confidence whatsoever? No, not at all. I mean, the game's already over with, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. And that's how you got to look at it. Yeah, we're going to come in and, and watch the film tomorrow. And But uh, now our main focus is, is getting better this weekend and working on being consistent and execute our offense so we can come out and have a, a great game against Florida. All right, now on the defensive side of the ball, I thought, listen, in our previews that we had on MissouriNet.com, we talked about Georgia's offensive line being pretty good. I didn't realize they were this good. I mean, they really shut down and took away a lot of that pass rush from Mizzou today. You didn't hear a lot from Shane Ray. You didn't hear a lot from Marcus Golden. This Georgia offensive line is very good. Well, I had a chance to go over to the Georgia side for part of the postgame, too. The thing that they were most happy with is showing people we are a full, complete team. They were very pleased to win without Todd Gurley in the lineup today because of that very thing. The offensive line showing, yes, he's an elite back, but we do something to help that and showing today that they can get the job done regardless of situation, and they're dominant. They're really, really tough, and Missouri is a pretty good defensive team. Bill, they're not great. I wouldn't put them there, but they're pretty good. 
and they didn't look like it today. They couldn't get any rush going, and it wasn't big chunks of yards, but the offensive line for Georgia was able to maintain drives by getting enough to get four and five sometimes when they needed it. I I thought their line was better than, than I initially thought, and coming in, I really thought it was a pretty good line, and they're better than I thought. Yeah, we haven't even talked about Nick Chubb, the Nick Chubb, the uh, freshman running back. I mean, here's a kid that came in. Mar- Mark Rick basically said to Mizzou, all right, here you go. Gurley's not playing. We're going to run our freshman, and we're going to run him, and we're going to run him, and we're going to continue to run over 30 carries. And he said, hey, basically, stop us. And and they couldn't. They could not stop uh, that Georgia offensive line or Nick Chubb today. you got to give the kid a lot of credit. And to shoulder as much of the load as he was asked to, they didn't hold back any. It's like uh, at one point in the early in the second quarter, he had 19 touches, 16 carries, three catches. And as you said, they kept giving it to him. Billy, he didn't get big chunks of yardage. He didn't run for 30 or 40, and he didn't have the big breakaway gains that, that Gurley often has. However... He was really consistent, and he took care of the football. And the line blocks for him and gets the job done. Georgia's pretty good. Missouri was really bad today. And unfortunately, we talked about this after Indiana. How do you respond to something like this? They better respond fast because this is the kind of game that that lets seasons start to slip away if you're not careful. Yeah, absolutely. Here was the other key stat, too. When you look at uh, third down conversions, 12 of 21 for Georgia. They, they would run Chubb. He'd get three yards, get three yards on second down. You left with a third and four. They were playing too soft off of the wide receivers, gave Hudson Mason plenty of time. That's where they were able to convert. Mizzou 0 for 7 third down conversions. We'll wrap it up with what Gary Pinkle had to say. I'm very disappointed with how we play. A lot of mistakes. Um, obviously, we're struggling on, on offense, moving the football, and you combine it with five turnovers. It's not going to. You know, it's going to be very difficult to beat anybody, let alone a really, really good football team. So, um, you know, it starts with me. I thought we had great practices. I think mean, everything looked right up till kickoff. I think we had good practices. We had, you know, great focus. Um, but uh, you know, we're, we're not executing like we need to execute, and I'm responsible to make sure the team does it. And so, uh, it's, it'll start with me. And, uh, you know, we're going to work real hard to get better. There's a lot and a half seasons left, so a lot of things out there. Uh, but there's certainly a sense of urgency on getting things uh, fixed uh, quick. Did you consider pulling Maddie at any point? No. Why no. not? What's that? Why not? Because I didn't want to. You've talked about inconsistent offense. I mean, I know you never see a game like that coming, but have you, have you seen just kind of signs that you weren't? Where you wanted to be over the last few weeks? Yeah, yeah, we've been struggling and working through it. I mean, you know, we've been we've been trying to improve. You know, the week before, two weeks ago in South Carolina, we had our struggles there. And then fourth quarter, we got going. We work and try to make it better, and that's something that you know uh, you you have to do. And but when you multiply it by uh, you know having five turnovers, I mean, you're not going. You're hard to win any any game against any team ever. Turn the ball over five times and not, not getting any on defense because that means you're not getting any short fields. And so when you're minus five turnover margin, it's very, very difficult. And in a couple, couple of weeks, we had two tip balls. I mean, we hand the ball right in the hands of the receiver, and they popped right into the defenders. Um, you know, Matty, uh, we had the ball throw it back, and the ball got knocked out as a protection. And then he had one on the corner route that he should have threw to the sideline a little bit more, and then he was just trying to make a play at the end. He was doing everything to try to make a play, probably from frustration. So you analyze them, you know, can they be fixed? Yeah. Is there a sense of urgency? <laughs> it's an understatement. Okay, so obviously a lot of work for the Missouri Tigers. Uh, Mike, closing thoughts. I'm really disappointed today, and not that they lost the game, but the manner in which they lost it. Uh, My disappointment, though, doesn't even come close to what they are feeling, and a number of those players and the coaching staff. And uh, we'll come back again Saturday and hit the road and see what happens. But uh, they planted some serious seeds of doubt today, and uh, maybe those can be uh, squashed quickly. But it was a disappointing day for Oldfield. I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah, and you hit it right on the head now. We're starting to see a pattern. So next game at Florida, continue to watch MissouriNet.com as we get ready for that game and the second half of the season here. So once again, final score, 34 nothing. Georgia clobbers Mizzou. For Mike Reeves, I'm Bill Pollock. Thanks for watching MissouriNet.com.